Hey Darius, uh, as a you know, as a veteran, even though this is a new team for you. Okay, uh, hey, it's Slay, not Darius. Okay. I hate Darius. Oh. Hey Darius, after the trade, the Slay. question came up. Some, okay, hey Slay. Is it tough, Darius, if you are going through Slay? Like, the first, or Slay, sorry. Does anyone call you Big Play? Yeah, he's going either, no, that's either he's going to be Big Play or Slay. If I hear the D name, I got a problem. Hey Darius. Slay. Is, is there one big reason why the Slay. defense is uh, is had? Slay. Sorry, I'm looking good. Slay, Slay, it's Slay. Yeah, you're right, Darius. Slay, Slay. I'm sorry, you're right. Good. Hey, Darius. I'm, I mean, Slay. Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh um, my God. Darius. Uh, Slay. Slay. Darius. What was the? Uh, Slay. 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 All right, Darius, let's go. I'll slay. Don't call him Darius, and you can't call him an eagle anymore either. Darius Slay released by the Birds earlier today in a move that will save the Eagles $17 million against mm. the cap for the 2023 season. Slay is 32 years old and made the Pro Bowl in each of his last two seasons. Uh, before we get to some more... Um, sad news about losing people. Uh, we do have the Bird's Eye View presented by Bush Auto Group. Uh, I'm here with Barrett Brooks, Ray Dittinger, and Dave Zingaro. I am Taryn Hatcher and breaking news, Justin Fletcher Cox. Coming back on a one-year $10 million deal per Adam Schefter. I knew it. We were going to prepare here to talk about a bunch of losses, but real quick before we do that, a, a big, quite literally, big addition coming back. No question. You know, I mean... He's become a staple here in Philadelphia, you know. Fletcher Cox comes back, and $4 million less than it was, I didn't know if he was going to get t I, $10 million is, to me is a lot, but, mm -hmm. I mean, welcome back. You know, I, I'm, I'm good with that. I thought it would probably be around about 8 you know, 7 8 but he gets 10 I'm not going to hate on his money. Get your money, bro. But, hey, he played well last year, and I think it, um, he'll, he'll be all right coming into the season. Your yeah, um, yeah I, I agree. I, I thought that it was – when the Eagles made the decision earlier to re-up Brandon Graham, mm -hmm. who was a, another veteran player who a lot of people thought, well, maybe he's reached the point where he's got to move on. They can't afford him. The team has to turn it over. And they made the decision to, to, to do a one-year deal with Brandon Graham for reasonable money and give him a chance to finish his career as an Eagle where he started it. I kind of had a feeling we might go this way with Fletcher Cox, too. And the other fact is, simply put, you lose Javon Hargrave. Yeah. You know, right now, you're not exactly, you don't exactly have an overflow bunch of defensive tackles. So bringing Fletcher Cox back makes a lot of sense. The, the number 10 surprise you at all, Dave? No, I mean, I want to see what it actually breaks down as right. and see the cap hit. But once Javon Hargrave was out of their price range, you thought maybe they'd pivot and go after Fletcher. And it was pretty clear that Hargrave wasn't going to be in their price range. And, and this is a more palatable deal if you're the Eagles. I do want to point out, last week on this show, we did our, our top five most likely to re-sign. One through four on my list have come true. Five was C.J. Gardner-Johnson, so we'll see if we can make it a clean sweep. Sure, don't pull a muscle, sure. pat hey, yourself on the back. I don't get many Andy. things right. When I get something right, everyone's going to know about it, Yay. right? But, but, you know, it, it, Especially because like, Rube's not here to like put you in check and disagree <laughs> with every other thing that no, you that's said. A, that also, that's no small thing now. That there aren't too many people that went four for four here. I mean, that was that's pretty good. Now we'll see if if Gardner-Johnson stays. Well, we but hope he gets checks that. in the yeah. mail, right? But yeah, that's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But that's but that but that is a big one. Gardner Johnson is that is a that is a guy they really really need to keep. So I have to take all of our excitement and maybe maybe bring us back down to earth a little bit, especially you, Dave Zingaro. <laughs> um, there was chatter about High Roseman getting too sentimental after 2017. Any concern at all here about how we being sentimental? I feel like Brandon Graham playing the way he played last year takes. Any concern about sentimentality out of that contract? But are, are you concerned at all that he's got that no. nostalgia, that attachment? Well, it, it's different for me when I played because when you talk about GMs, when I played, GMs were hated. It was us against them. He's one of the guys that, you know, he's the closest to being a player that he could ever be and being in that locker room by being the GM. I've never seen a GM that cordial and that polite and that cool with players. Usually they're the enemy. You know, they're, 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 you know, they're the leaders of the empire, and they're trying to take what we have. They don't want to give us the money. And he's cool with all these guys. So I think that's a different dynamic that I haven't seen before. Um, I, what was my GM's name? I forget his name. Um, uh, no, no, no. I'm talking about here with the Eagles. Not, I would say Kevin Colbert. He was with the Steelers. But I'm talking right. about when I was with the Eagles, uh, 
What was my GM's name? See, that's how much I'd say I didn't like my GM. In fact, he's the one that sent um, – he sent everybody going, sent everybody back. I mean, how do you trade a guy that's a, 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 you know, a, a future Hall of Famer? He, I mean, Dawkins, he traded well, Dawkins well, to probably, Denver. Joe, probably Joe Banner. Joe Banner, thinking. yes, Joe Banner. That's a Joe Banner. See, I didn't like him. I still don't like him. I mean, talk about I, He's gone from my head. Check out Joe, Joe Banner on the latest Takeoff podcast with John Clark. Clark. That, perfect, you know what I'm saying? That's perfect for it. But that, he, he just... You just don't have that type of relationship with a GM. Joe Banner will tell you all the time, I couldn't be friends with these guys because I had to let him go. He's different. He's friends with these guys. Meanwhile, I'll see, like, Howie sideline at a Sixers game, and it's, like, Jalen or whoever's in there that night will come walking over to Howie as much as Howie will come walking over to that's, them to say hello. That's new territory. It seems like that would make this more of a destination location. For well, I, I think that's true to an extent, but it also does come down to performance. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I mean, sentiment is fine. But, you know, <laughs> Howie didn't make his decision based on old Lang Syne here. I mean, if, if he didn't feel like Brandon Graham could contribute and Fletcher couldn't contribute, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Right, right. The fact is, Brandon Graham played really well last year. Yeah. I mean, he came back from that injury and played better than I thought he could. And Fletcher Cox, I thought, had a bounce back kind of year too, in a more reduced role. I mean, if you know, if you can get these guys playing fewer snaps, then you can still get production out of them. And I think there's still there's still a place for leadership in this game. And I think that one of the things that helped the Eagles last year was that that core group of veteran players provided great direction for the younger players. And now if you, as many of those guys as you can bring back, I think it's a positive thing. Yeah. Yeah. The fact, too, that we, Ray just mentioned Fletcher had a bounce back year. He absolutely did. And his contract is, we'll see the real numbers, but $4 million less than his one-year deal a year ago kind of goes to that point. Like, you're paying him for what he is now. And it might be an overpay still, for Fletcher, he's the one where you say, or maybe there's a little sentimentality involved, but the def defensive tackle market had dried up. Mm -hmm. you, you need to replenish that position. It's a really important position on this defense. Even with Jordan Davis in the middle of that defense, you still need another defensive tackle. And now you have him, Jordan Davis, Fletcher Cox, and probably Milton Williams, unless they draft someone. That's a solid start. Well, you know, I think he's, he's, he's going to fit more what you know, Coach Desai wants to do as far as running a 3-4. He'll be head up over that tackle, and that's the biggest thing. He can play that position, and I think he'll play that position well. Head up over the tackle, playing a defensive end slash, you know, kind of a four-eye technique. I mean, he could do great things from that position right there because he could rush the passer from there and stop the run and create penetration from that top and, position. And you have to look at what that position was or where it was right now. I mean, with Hargrave leaving, and you know Sue is not coming back, and you know Joseph is not coming back, I mean, you would have been really thin at that position. So, I mean, bringing Fletcher Cox back, I think, makes perfect sense. Well, and the Eagles, speaking of thin, have already gotten somewhat lean on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, in addition to losing Darius Slay today, this is kind of the who we know we've lost so far on the defensive side of the ball. The Eagles, as we mentioned, Javon Hargrave said to the 49ers, or excuse me, went to the 49ers on a massive $81 million deal. Both linebackers gone in TJ Edwards, some Bears, Kaiser White to the Cardinals, and Marcus Epps. Now a Raider on a two-year deal. They also lost back backup offensive lineman Andre Dillard to the Titans overall. Uh, guys, I think the Fletcher Cox news softens some of the blow of that. But overall, uh, Dave, are, are you worried by just the sheer amount that they lost kind of immediately? I know Howie sort of told everyone brace for impact it's coming. But when you see it, it's still kind of like... There's another hole on the roster. It's a lot. Like I mentioned earlier, though, none of those names, you know, obviously the Hargrave one hurts the most, but they were never going to pay that. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of be real with yourself and say, look, th they knew he was going to leave. The one contract on that list I think you could have if you wanted to was TJ Edwards, but I also understand the thought process there. And you don't want to overpay for a player who's good, but is, is TJ Edwards really a difference maker? He's not. And I like TJ Edwards. He was a really good player. Had a very good season last year. I don't think it's going to ruin the franchise to not have him. That said, we knew this was coming, and it's going to continue to happen in certain, uh, to a certain extent because you're going to pay the quarterback, and you're going to have to just build the team differently. They went all in when Jalen was on this rookie contract wisely. That was the right thing to do. From this point on, though, you're going to have to just change the way you construct this team, and it's going to have to depend on draft picks, and that's what they're going to do. All right, we'll see what the Eagles, in fact, do do and what Howie Roseman can get done. But we're, we're getting done here. So to come, 
Talking about Rashad Penny, the Eagles added him to the running back room and they brought back Boston Scott. How good can that group be? And where will Miles Sanders end up? As we break, it's time for Birds Trivia, driven by AAA. What is the biggest contract the Eagles have ever handed out to a free agent from another team? That answer and more when we return. <laughs> 